guys welcome back to another rough town raptors so what have we got in this time it's a citroen relay bit of a change from the sprinters nice change um so it's a 2010 citroen relay so it's one of the first ones i like it. it's got that kind of look inside it's got the kind of rustic thing it's got the wood burning stove so hopefully the chimney should just clear going under if not i'll have to take the top of the cowl off it's got a few little uh, dents that are quite obvious life is an adventure go explore it a couple of dents in the back doors you see where the uh, hinges have buckled the frame next quirky camper so you may have uh, if you've rented off quirky campers orion the camper van this is orion now this side is actually quite bad all this has been rippled as you can see and it's not been repaired very well like yeah that's all cracked so that's gonna have to come off but yeah this this side's gonna need a bit of work a big crease down there we will go around it with the sharpie in a minute so we've got some uh, lovely carbon fiber effect vinyl crap on the bonnet that's got to come off you see the roof started peeling um apparently it's a quite a common fact with these that the paint actually peels on them um it's quite a few pepper dents sticking out so i'm guessing that's where it's been had the build done and they've just like you can see all the dents sticking out so that's gonna have to be tapped back in and then sorted out but other than that it's not too bad so we've got to take all the stickers off go around it with the sharpie and then highlight all the major dents and everything i'll just sell fire more but basically what we're doing is we're going olive green bumpers going black bonnets going green plastics going black yeah so basically just olive green and black nice simple one apart from all the repairs so the first job we're going to run it with a sharpie highlight all the dents and then we'll start stripping it awesome nice we've got one there and one there the obvious big dent there massive dent there one there right I'll go around see what I can find and then oh, another one there actually hiding under wing mirror I'll go around and see what I can find. Um, time lapse it and I'll catch up with you guys at the end and we'll show you what we found. She? We'll see what we found. She, she. Right, guys, that was the initial walk around. As you can see, a few big dents, uh, a couple of little ones, not too bad. Um, back doors, as we said, a little bit buckled and what have you. And then major ones on this side. But yeah, not too bad. Nothing, nothing we didn't expect. Um, the bonnet. As you can see, uh, they've got peeling some of the vinyl off and it looks like they've kind of had a go sprayed it matte black at some point before they uh, attempted to vinyl wrap it. Anyway, so next job, um, get it stripped. All the plastics off, bumpers off, everything, side trims. Um, I'll have to order new clips for the side trims because notoriously they always snap when you take them off. Um, yeah, so everything off, lights off, everything. So that's my next job. Get it stripped. Right, cool. Right, guys, as you can see, been a little bit busy. Front end all fully stripped down. We've got all the vinyl crap, which is all over the floor there. All the vinyl crap off the bonnet. Uh, like I said, all the lights and everything. Actually, stripped down really easy, these. Well, I say really easy, really good. Um, all the side trims off, 
circled a few more dents that I found. I probably will find more as I'm going along as the light keeps catching them. And yeah, I need to get this off so I can get to the rust behind it. All the dents circled, all the plastic stripped off. Back end fully stripped. On the side, we've been smashing all the filler off where it was all cracked so I can see what was underneath. You can see it's had a nice big gouge there. So I can get all that tidied up now, get some new filler in there, get it all looking a little bit better. Still looks a bit naff there, but I'm going to sort all that out. Next job is to go around, sand all the areas that need filling, and then I can put a bit of filler in them. And then while the filler's drying, I can go around and start DA in the van. And find more dents, probably. Anyway, so next job is to go around, sand and get some filler in. So I'll get some filler in and then catch up and see what it's looking like. Right guys, as you said, we've been round, put the uh, second skimmer filler in, that's all nice and 
baked off in the sun now. Doesn't take long for it to dry off in this weather. In winter time, you can add a little bit more hardener, activator, whatever you want to call it, to um, speed up the curing time of the filler. But in summertime, it cures off really fast. As you can see, it was starting going like lumpy before it even got like halfway through it. So anyway, so it's best to make it in small batches in summer. If you make a big amount, you probably end up throwing a lot of it away. But this is all dried off now. So, we have the wonderful job of going around now. Bit of sand in it. Right, let's get some sand in done.
right guys as you can see we've got all the primer in done so all nice and tidy now um still got a little bit more scotching to do on the outside there but that doesn't affect me doing inside the doors now so while the sun's baking perfect weather no wind um let's get inside the doors done so let's uh, load up the gun and get some olive green on the bloody thing awesome Right guys, all the primer in's done, inside the doors are done, so now we can hit the outside. Sun's roasting, but I've got to wear this otherwise I get it all over my arms. And once I'll do the roof and then if you're wondering about the roof, about the suspended solar panel if you can see it. And if you'd be able to see it there, let's have a look. If you can see the suspended solar panel, the reason for that is because the wire is going through the body. Normally there's a plug on top that you can unclip and you can take the panel off. But for some reason on this one, I think the plug might be inside. Whoever fitted it has fitted the wire inside. So unfortunately, unless I actually cut the wires, I can't get the solar panel off. So in this case, I've had to suspend it and then just mask the top up. So it's fine, I can get underneath it and everything. Not a problem. Anyway, you'll see when we get up there. So without further ado, let's get some Raptor on it. Awesome. Right guys, it's dawned on me that throughout my videos I've never actually shown you how to mix the Raptor, how, how much tint to add to the tintable. Um, so I'm in between doing a job and I need to mix another batch, so I thought I'd show you how to do it. So I'm going to show you how to mix a batch of Raptor. So basically when you buy the Raptor tin, you get a 5 litre tin. And it comes, if you put your mixing stick in, a full 5 litre tin comes up to number 20, so 20 centimetres, right? Now your tint is basically 10% tint, so when you buy the kit, you'll get three five. If you buy a kit, I buy a kit off um, Marlow Burns, off eBay. Not associated with them or affiliated with them in any way, but they never let me down and they always supply me with good stuff, so I'll keep using them. So you buy your kit, so you've got like 15 litres of tintable and a litre and a half of tint. So that makes out that basically it's 10% tint. Why do we buy the 5 litre tins as opposed to buying the bottles? Because it's easier to tint a big batch and one of these 5 litre tins, believe it or not, is equivalent to 7 bottles. So it actually works out more economical in the long run if you're doing big jobs all the time. Anyway, so you measure that, that's like 20. If you measure that, that works out at, uh, I think it's six centimetres deep when it's full, like with a litre and a half. So you have to take out um, basically four centimetres 
of tint. Otherwise, you won't have any room to tint the tint, if you know what I mean. Because the tint, are, yeah, there's already two centimetres missing out of this, so you can get to show you. But uh, I had to use some of this to top this one up to get the right coercion. Sorry if I'm waffling here, by the way, but I'm trying to explain to you guys. Keep it simple. So, um, yeah, if you left it full, you'd end up overflowing when you add the tint. So, if you've got another tin lying around, pull some out. So you want basically up to 16, and then you want two centimetres out of here. You see, if I dip that in there now, you see that comes up to four centimetres, right? So I want two centimetres out of that. Now you could say that if you put two centimetres in there and add it to 18, it'd be about right. But if you actually look at the diameter of the tins, that one's slightly narrower. So you'd end up using more tin in the first two batches than you would in the last batch. So don't do that. So basically what you need to do, you've kind of got your two mark. So I need it to be at two. So I've kind of got a guess. It's a bit of a guesswork really. Another couple of mil out of there. And that should be about right. So then, that, your last batch is easy because you're just pouring all that in the last batch. So a little spot more, there we go. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I've got me next tint for my next batch. Put the lid on that because the last thing you want to do is knock your tin over and lose all your tint. Speaking from experience, put your lids back on. So then we mix this. Right, so we've got the Raptor all mixed now, as you can see, and a lovely shirt. A lovely olive green colour that everybody seems to love. It is definitely the most popular colour, in my experience, anyway. And I'll just show you the tint difference. Right? So, that's the colour it is in the tin. Yeah, and then if I just give it a little dab, you can just see there. You see how dark it is in the tin to how light it becomes when it's mixed? So that's your shade difference there, yeah? So you see, it's not massively different, but it is a lighter shade. So it will look darker in the tint than it will in the Raptor. Right. I'll pop this back on, and then I'll get my tin to mix it in to show you how we mix it. Right. So we've got the uh, the colour all tinted up, looks nice. So then, what we do, if you remember what I said, we want nine. In the tint. All right, so we want nine. Pop that in there. That doesn't matter if we go over the binder, because that'll just mix in. That's up to number nine on the mixing stick. You can just see it there. Where is it? Have a look. Probably could do with a little bit more actually. But we'll go that way, then you can see it both sides. So number nine. So normally I would wear gloves doing this, however. It's a nightmare trying to work your camera when you've got gloves. We all say, I'll just get a bit wrapped up on my fingers. I'll show you why the foot's here in a minute. And then we want activator. This one's running out. It's alright, we've got another one. 
so that wants to go up to 12. Get out what we can of that. Now, if you're wondering why I've got a long lead to one left, it's because this came out of the black kit. So, yeah, I do buy the black in the bottles, even though it is more cost effective buying the black in the five litres. Why do I buy it in the bottles? Because you have to use the bottles for the tint. So if you're going to do your van, if you're going to do your van and you're going to do a colour and then say the plastic's in black, do the black first, which will then give you an empty bottle which you can rinse out and use for your colour. So we want that up to number 12. Is it moving it there? I'm moving it because the table's on slight tilt. We have some thinners. So one point two should be about there. And then, like any good cookery, we give it a good mix. So I still need a little bit more mixing. We'll try to settle in a minute and set this off. This is getting empty. We're using the variable gun, so you've got when you buy the kits off um, any in eBay or internet or wherever, they always come with a gun, don't they? But they come with the wrong gun. They always come with a standard Schultz gun, which will give you a really shit finish to put it on. So you want to invest that little bit extra and buy the variable gun where you can adjust the nozzle. And if you want to know what the nozzle turns should be, wind your nozzle all the way in so it's full. And then wind it out two full turns, and that'll be the perfect set. About 60 to 70 psi. So just invest 10 pound extra and buy yourself a little pressure regulator for your gun. Makes all the difference. Now we get in there. Feels all right. That, that feels pretty good. Where it runs off the stick. It's like caramel. It's like melted chocolate, really, isn't it? Don't try drinking it. I actually nearly did that the other night. You know, I was painting a van the other week, and I have a black coffee cup which I've wrapped it because I'm just a bit obsessed with this stuff. And I had them both on the bench, and I don't know why. I picked up the Raptor bottle. I had it to my mouth and I was just about to take a swig and realise what I had and I was like, ah! So I threw it back. That could have been close, couldn't it? So don't do that. Don't drink Raptor. Right. Awesome. So then, pour that into the cup. It shouldn't. See what I mean how it curls backwards? If you try pouring that into a bottle, it'd be horrendous. And then from bottle, uh, from cup to bottle. See? Just that little bit easier. Anything you can do in life to make your job easier, do it. Apart from playing the lottery. Don't play in the lottery, you'll never appreciate the money. Earn the money. Talking shit. Play the lottery and win and give me the money. I'll appreciate it for you. Anyway. So what do you see? Got a full bottle, mate. Right? And now, crack on and get the other side. So, there you go. Just a little uh, demonstration for you how to mix your after. And why we buy the five leap kit. Because five litres is equivalent to seven bottles. There you go. Right. Well, 
And if it's all good, should be the same colour as that. to me. Right, I'll crack on. We'll see you guys in a bit. Well, there you go guys, as you can see, she's finished. What do you think? Nice little walk around there for you. She's looking pretty damn cool, isn't she? So, olive green and black. Ever popular olive green RAL 6003, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, so we've got the black detailing on the bumper, on the grill, on the side trims. Uh, we've done the vents in green, colour coded. So basically a nice simple finish but looking proper part isn't it so what he's got to do now he's uh, heading down to his mates and he's having a nice set of rogue alloys fitted so i'll just finish it off nicely won't it so you go you see orion the camper van new lease of life he's uh he's not white and he's not battered he's looking mean and green and ready to take on new adventures anyway Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, comment, all the usual shenanigans. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay entertained, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios. Oh, there you go another one done right on with the next one